you, the ones of you that haven't tuned in yet, and the ones that are hearing, God bless you and thank you. Just want to give a shout out to my covering, um, Bishop David J. Singleton, this morning at worship. What a word, what a word. <laughs> Glory be to God. I'm telling you, he preached again on resilience, and he talked about being able to bounce back. So I just want to say to you, if you haven't heard that, that recording on Facebook, please listen. And you can always get it over on my channel on youtube.com forward slash Esther, E-S-T-H-E-R, Pinkston, P-I-N-K-S-T-O-N. Get that video and share it. It's a word that uh, for today. It's a word for today. I thank God for my covering. I thank God for Ark of Jesus Ministries. God bless you all. Let's just go ahead and pray because we got a lot to do today. And I'm asking God to help me to be shorter. I'm praying for that, but I have to obey the Holy Spirit. So let's go before the Lord. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we just thank you. Thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. And we thank you, Lord, for the word that you have for us today. Lord, that I will decrease and you might increase and bless your people in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. We're going to be talking today, going to get right into it, about fear. Oh, my God. And we're going to talk about overcoming seven common fears. Overcoming seven common fears. And um, I, I, I've been, gosh, this thing is so huge because... You know, my handle is no longer bound. And and I thank God uh, for these seven things that I'm no longer bound by. And if there was anything still there, getting delivered from, because this is huge. God wants us free in him. So let's get right into it. We're looking at the fear of criticism. We're looking at the fear of poverty. We're looking at the fear of old age and death. We're looking at the fear of failure. We're looking at the fear of offending others. We're looking at the fear of looking foolish. We're looking at the fear of success. My God, my God, my God. Seven, seven fears. And we got a lot of scripture, but we won't do it all today. And if the Lord says and I have to come back with a, a second part, that'll be okay too. But let me just read a little bit about the fear of criticism. Uh, this is this is in my uh, devotion that I'm studying here. So this is brought some of it is research and brought in from others and some the Lord gave me. And we just put it all together and however God wants to deliver this, this is what He'll do. Amen. So fear of criticism. Many people are afraid to live their dreams for fear of what others may think and say about them. Now, I can stop there and probably talk for the rest of the, the, the show, the program on that, but I'm not going to do it. I spent my life being afraid of what other people thought about me and what other people would say. It held me back in the ministry. It held me back in my music. It held me back in, in just tons and tons of things because I, had, I was concerned about what other people thought. But let me share God delivered me no longer bound. Listen, this is one thing that I share with people and I share with youth. And I, I pray that you grab it right now as we move on. People are going to talk about you whether you do or whether you don't. Okay? 
No, I, amen. You, you, something's going to be said if you do. Something is going to be said if you don't. So you have to determine what it is that you want people to talk about about you. I mean, you set the standard. And then you put your blinders on. Thank you, Lord. Like they do on the horses when they're in the race. You put those blinders on and you don't look to the right or you don't look to the left, but you look straight ahead and you stay focused on what God has given you to do. And that's an amen. Surveys show Fear of public speaking at, is at the top of the list. It says our fear of standing up in front of a group and talking is so great that we fear it more than death, at least according to some surveys. And, and, and that's a hole. That's a, that's a trick of the enemy. Because, listen, let me share something with you. We are all dirt. We are all dirt. We are all made in the image of God. If you don't believe that we're dirt, you watch when somebody die and they decompose. After all the embalming and all that stuff is gone, they're just going to disintegrate and go right back to the dust of the earth. It doesn't matter about race, creed, or color. We're all dirt. Amen? So why are we fearing one another when we're all made in the same image of God? All right, let's move on. So now what I want to do is I'm not going to go through each one of these in per se, but I want to just come against the spirit of, of, of fear overall, okay? That this fear, false evidence appearing real, someone said. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it binds you and it holds you back. But there's another fear that is going on right now in the world. And I want to read uh, a little bit of 2 Timothy chapter 3. I promise uh, a few folks that I would talk about that just a hair. It says, and this is the King James Version, this know also that in the last days, in the last days, perilous times shall come. Now I want to share something with you. Yeah, now I'm not going to give my age away, but you know I'm not a teenager. I've been hearing this and reading this scripture from as long as I can remember but I'm trying to tell you this. I want to, let me say this to you too. Amen. The Bible says that a day in, in the Lord is as a thousand years. Wow. A day in the Lord is as a thousand years. He often referred to the last days as if when Jonah was in the belly of the whale, three days and three nights. When Jesus was crucified, amen, he said three days and three nights. All through the scriptures, three days and three nights. Jesus has been gone as we um, use our calendar and we say two days. Uh, this was, you know, we're in 20, you are in, in 2000, amen, 2020, 2020, 2021, we're in, yeah, amen. We're not in 30 something. So if we look at it in a way of saying, he's been gone two days. So even though I have been hearing this since I was a child, I have not lived a day in the Lord yet. I thought about that one time and, and um, I was looking in the scripture where it says some of the saints of old lived to be 999 years old and all of this. And I said, wow, that seems like a long, long time. But you know what? If a day in the Lord is as a thousand years, they really didn't quite live one day. That is so deep. Oh, leave that alone. I'm just throwing that out. Amen. That is so huge. So what we're saying then, if we're saying in the last days, and I've been hearing this in the last days and in the last days, when is it going to happen? Trust me, we're in the last days. And we might, we might die and leave this earth before we see all these things fulfilled. But I need you to know, if you listen at what I'm going to read now, You'll think this was written today. All right, let's start it again at verse first. Uh, I'm going to go to Second Timothy chapter three, verse one, and I'm only going to read down to the fifth verse, and then we're going to move on. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy 
without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power there are, is a from such turn away. I'm telling you, it's like you would be reading the newspaper that day at all these things that are going on. It is an absolute belief, this is the comment that goes on into our study, that God is constantly working behind the scenes in every area of our lives, even when there is no tangible evidence to support that fact. So what I'm saying to you is this, fear or not, don't fear whatever, uh, don't fear, just fear or not. Know that God has you. Know that he is working things out. Amen? And uh, on the other hand, fear simply stated is unbelief or weak belief. Fear simply stated is unbelief or weak belief. So let's go back now. Our deliverance from fear and worry is based on faith which is the very opposite of unbelief. Faith is a gift. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 9. And faithfulness is described as a fruit, a characteristic that is produced in our lives by the Holy Spirit. That's Galatians 5, 22 and 23. And you'll see the fruit of the Spirit listed there. The Christian faith is a confident assurance in a God who loves us, who knows our thoughts, and who cares about our deepest needs. Hallelujah. That faith continues to grow as we study the Bible, as we learn the attributes of his amazing character. The more we learn about God, the more we can see him working in our lives, and the stronger our faith grows. Let me say it again. The more we learn about God, the more we can see him working in our lives and the stronger our faith grows. The more we learn his ways, his character, and how he does things, the more faith we will have in him and therefore we can fear not. A growing faith is what we desire to have and what God desires to produce in us. But how in day-to-day -day life can we develop a faith that conquers our fear? Well, here's the answer. The Bible says, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. It's Romans 10, 17. The careful study of God's Word is of a primary importance in developing a strong faith. God want, wants us to know and completely rely on His direction in our lives. God wants us to know Him and completely rely on His direction in our lives. He will not lead us wrong. He loves us. Oh, if we could just grab hold to this today. It's through the hearing, the reading, and the meditation in the scriptures that we begin to experience a strong, confident faith that excludes worry and fear. Worry and fear is sin. Worry is sin. Word is saying, worry is saying, God, I don't trust you. I don't believe that you can take care of me. I know you say it in your word, but I just don't kind of believe it. Amen? In Psalms, we see the picture of David, who like us experienced times of fear. Psalms 56.3 actually reveals his faith with these words, when I am afraid, I will trust in you. When I am afraid, I will trust in you. So we're talking about fear. Amen. Fear of things not working out. Fear, I won't have enough food. Fear, I, 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 the wealthy fears poverty. No one wants to be poor. They fear it. They fear the loss of their money. 
That's what's going on right now with the economy and with the elections. We, they, 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 even, even there are some Christians, some evangelicals, they're compromising their faith because of fear. Fear of, of losing their finances. Fear of the stock market crashing. Fear. It, it, it is there. So, I, I, you know, I, no, I won't lose all my money. I'm not going to do this. So I, I'll jeopardize my integrity. I'll jeopardize what I believe in. I'll, I'll, I'll admonish a lie because I, because I got to hold on to, to my to my wealth, I gotta hold on to my property. I gotta hold on to what I have. So I know God says I'm supposed to do this, and I know God says I'm supposed to do that, and I know I'm supposed to stand up, but because of fear of poverty, because of fear of losing what I have, I'll kind of turn the other cheek. You ever seen somebody that, that, you know what you're doing is wrong. You know it's wrong. You know it's wrong. But yet, you'll say, huh, God, I'm going to do it just this time. I, I, I'll, 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 ah, I'll pray about it. Lord, forgive me. But I know it's wrong. But I'm going to go ahead and do it. Because you fear what somebody's going to say. You fear criticism. You fear other people. But yet, God says, what does it Profit a man if he gained the whole world. You gain all your wealth. You gain all of this stuff. And then you say you lose your soul. That's what's going to happen in the end. So we don't want to do this. So what we do, we get to know God. We get to know his word. We get to know how he operates. And therefore we can rely on him and have confidence in him. So in Psalms, David who like us experience a time of fear. I said Psalms 56, 3. He, he, it said, reveals his faith in Israel. When I am afraid, I will trust in you. Psalms 119 is filled with verses expressing the way in which David treasured God's word. I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. Verse 10, I meditate on your precepts and consider your ways. Verse 15, I have I, I, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin from you. Verse 11, it says here, there are revealing words that speak wisdom to us today. That's what these are. God is kind and understanding toward our weaknesses. He already knows. He said he knows what's in man. He made us. But he requires us to go forward in faith. And the Bible is clear that faith does not mature and strengthen without trials. I don't like trials. Anybody that knows me know where I've been. We've been through it. Glory be to God. And as I'm, if I keep living, I'm gonna go through some more. But I'm told you like I, I'm telling you like I told you once before. Trials. We, we we don't grow when everything is 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 calm, when everything is peaceful. God, I don't like. I I, I love it when it's calm. I love it when it's relaxed. You ever looked at the river and you see it, it, it looked like a shining glass on top. It looked like it's just as still as it can be. But underneath there's a current that's going on. It's forever moving. Things have to happen. Things have to keep moving in us in order for us to grow, in order for us to become what God wants us to be. So what he will do he will use sometimes trials and adversities. We grow through those things. When we come out, listen, catch what I said. When we come out, we come out stronger than we were when we went in. When we come out, we come out in a way that we can help somebody else. When we come out, we can tell that brother or that sister, God did it for me. And if he did it for me, he'll do it for you. Oh, glory be to God. This is a good word. I'm preaching to myself here. Adversity is God's most effective tool to develop strong faith. Oh, I don't like adversity. I don't like it. Jesus. That pattern is evident in Scripture. God takes each one of us through fearful situations. Oh, my God. <laughs> Woo. And as we learn to obey God's word 
and allow it to saturate our thoughts, we find each trial becomes a stepping stone to a stronger and a deeper faith. I want to share something with you. There's nothing worse than having a situation and you're trying to, you're asking God for, for, for a word, for help. And he uses people. God speaks to us. He's spoken to me audibly in my ear. He's spoken to me in my spirit. He's spoken to me through the word. But he's also spoken to me through people because God uses people. God uses people. We are his mouthpiece. We are the oracle of God. We are his hands, his eyes, his feet. Our bodies belong to God. Our, our, our bodies are the temple of God. So he inhabits, he dwells, he lives within us, and he moves through us. So he speaks through people. But have you ever tried to share something you're dealing with with someone, and they have no idea what you're talking about? They cannot identify. And you're like, oh my God. But then you will go and you'll talk to a soldier of God. No, it doesn't matter what the age. It's not about age. And they'll say, you know, I know what you mean. I, 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 I had that. Or I've been through that. I've dealt with death. Or I've dealt with sickness. Or I've dealt with a bankruptcy. Or I've dealt with a divorce. Or I've dealt with COVID-19. Or I've dealt with, you understand, but God brought me through, so I feared not. How did you How did you make it? Because you know, it, it worry steps in. Fear, false evidence appearing real, it steps in. You know, it's because I I, I I did like David. I went back into the Word, and I remembered. I, I gotta let David tell it. He said, "He said God worked this way in David's life when David volunteered uh, uh, to fight against Goliath. He said." The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion, oh, and the paw of the bear, will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine, Jesus. So what are you saying? What are you saying to your friend? The same God that brought me through what I went through before, he'll bring me through today. So I'm telling you, he'll bring you through. Fear not. Just trust him. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. The word of God is rich with promises for us to take hold of and to claim. And when we face financial troubles, Philippians 4.19, tell us, And my God shall supply all of my needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I, I told you one of the, of the seven fears we're talking about. Definitely poverty. And when you got a big bank account, you don't have to worry. But then, that's not always true. Because again, I said the wealthy is fearful. They're fearful of the stock market crashing. They're fearful of all the 401ks and all of the things going away. You, you lose all the money. That's, whoa, you got something to worry about right there. Am I secure? Is my, is my inheritance secure? Glory be to God. Jesus, what can you do as my pastor preached this morning? Bounce back. It is there that is that spirit of resilience in you that God give you God give you to bounce back. Hallelujah. If we are anxious about a future decision, Psalms 32 8, we're almost done here, reminds us that God will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. God says, I will instruct you. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. You know. There's an old song we used to sing years ago, and uh, it's a classic, and it's called His Eyes on the Sparrow. My mom loved that song, and I used to sing it, and used to teach it in voice class, and I had a young lady one time, she's an adult now, and she uh, was, was, was wanting to learn that song. And so I was saying, I asked her, I said, well, do you know what that means? Do you know the words, what, what's going on with this, with the lyrics? And she said, no. Do you know what a sparrow is? She said, no. I said, okay. Let, let's talk about this. You see, what this is talking about is the sparrow, that little bird. If God has his eye on that little bird that's out there, not an eagle, but he's a little bird. And if God has his eye on him and he protects him, how much more will he protect and care for me? Amen.
Hallelujah, Jesus, the ones of us that are made in his image. I'm talking right right now. I know I'm talking good. Hallelujah. If someone turns against us, we can uh, be confident by the words of Romans 8.31. If God is for us, who can be against us? Let me say this all thank you, Lord. Right now, right now, with, with, with the election coming in, with, with the economy the way it is, and with racism the way it is, and with all of these ugly things raising their ugly head, grab hold to this fact. Every day when you get up and when you pray over your children and when you cover your sons and when you cover your daughters, if God be for us, who can be against us? So I stand in the, in the faith that I have in God and, and I apply the blood of Jesus by faith over my, my beings and over my family and all that I'm dealing with. And devil, I command you to take your hands off in Jesus' name. Greater is he that is within me than he that is in the world. If God be for God. Me. Who? Ha. Who? Oh, hallelujah, can stand against us. Throughout life, we will continue to face various trials that would, be, that, that would cause us to fear. But God assures us that we can know a calm peace through every situation. He says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything. By prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding. I don't understand it. I don't understand how he doesn't. I don't understand how someone can lose something very dear to them. I didn't understand that, that the seniors, the, elder, the elderly, my mom generation, all those folks, they would be going through and they would lose. And, oh, my God, things would happen. But, you know, they would just say, God has it. It's in God's hands. He's in control. And I get a little upset. What you mean to say, Mom, we have Nope. It's in God's hands. I'm standing on the word of God. What you doing? You, you mean you're putting the Bible on the floor and jumping up and down on it? No. That was my level of understanding. Now I know differently. The Word of God is in my heart. He's written it and it's on my heart. It's in my mind. It's in my spirit. As the pastor said this morning, I breathe God. He blew his breath into me and I breathe God. He's all over me. He's in me. He lives in me. So I trust him and I'm standing on his word that he will never fail. It says, and the peace of God will transcend all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, Philippians 4, 7. We serve an awesome God. He's a mighty God. And I'm going to encourage you today to trust him all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your mind. And those seven fears, all right, fear of criticism, ah, I bind it right now in the name of Jesus. The fear of poverty, my God shall supply all my needs. I bind it right now. I need some saints to pray with me. I bind it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. The fear of old age and death. Hmm. I bind that fear. Thank God that we are still living. I pray to God that we'll see old age. Amen. Amen. You stand fast in the Lord. I bind it in the name of Jesus. I release long life upon you. And it's inevitable that we're all going to die. But I pray that you do not die before your time. I pray that you will be able to fulfill the destiny, the calling that God has upon your life. The fear of failure. I bind the fear of failure right now in the name of Jesus. There's no fear. I need you to understand that if you fail, you see how the one writer said, I just learned how to do it again. I, I can't, time won't allow me to tell you how many times I've tried something and messed up. I tried it and messed up. I tried it and messed up. I've, I've blown it. But I didn't give up. 
I didn't give up. If I had quit, if I had given up due to the fear of criticism and all of the things that was happening to me, I wouldn't be here today. I didn't give up. Somebody grab hold to that. Amen. The fear of offending others. The Bible says, it. I think he says even a perfect man offends somebody. So there's no way you're not going to be able to offend somebody. Get rid of that. I bind that spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. Do, keep your eyes focused on the Lord and do what the Lord has called you to do. Listen, I can't be you and you can't be me. It's not going to happen. God never intended for you and me to be the same. We are all unique. We are all unique. Amen? One, I, I used to then, I, I want you to look like somebody else. I've shared this with you before. I want to, <coughs> pardon me, I want to look like my sister. Mm. I want to look like somebody else. I want to have somebody else's features and somebody else's voice and somebody else's, uh, stop! Because we're saying to, to, to God, we don't appreciate what you've done for us. So, so I bind that spirit in the name of Jesus. We are God's best. We are God's best. And we're made in his image. The fear of looking foolish. I ain't even got to say it. I might be looking <laughs> foolish right now to some. That some might think, you know. Who in the world does she think she is? I think that I'm a child of God. And I think that I'm on the battlefield for the Lord. And I think that I'm in his will. That's what I think. The fear of success. Now, that sounds strange, but that's very true. When we get a promotion that we work for us for so long, and when we've been trying to get something, we've been praying for it for a long time, we get fearful. Oh my God, what if I make it? What if it really does come to pass? What if this dream that I have of being a blessing, being on a stage, singing in front of people once COVID is gone, being somewhere just magnifying God, what if I mess up? Then you're getting back to you now. And you're not trusting God. We're not leaning on Him. Amen? Let's pray. Hallelujah. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you. We bless you. Praise you. Magnify you. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for life. Thank you for health. sound mind. Thank you, Lord, that you have not given us a spirit of fear, but a power and of love and of a sound mind. We thank you, Lord, for the, the, the healing that's coming into somebody's body right now, that are dealing with sickness and not feeling good. Thank you for the healing in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for salvation. Somebody right now, Lord, want to give their heart to you. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. We give you praise. Somebody need to say, Lord Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and as my Savior. Come into my life. Take, take control, oh God. I renounce Satan. He's no longer my God. I accept you. Lord, lead me to a, a place of fellowship where I can hear the uncompromising word of God. Fill me with your Holy Spirit that I can read your word and understand the clarity, be nourished up in the words of faith and grow up thereby. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah.
him. Hallelujah, Jesus. Somebody say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. Mm -hmm. And we're just going to stand on the word of God. Hallelujah. Yes, I'm standing on the word of God. Yes, I'm standing on the word of God. Yes, I'm standing on the word of God every day. EsterPinkston.com is my website. YouTube.com forward slash EsterPinkston, E S T H E R P I N K S T O N. You can also go to SoundCloud.com forward slash EsterPinkston. Leave a comment. Tell me if you were blessed or if you have a question or if there's something else you want me to hear or if you got a prayer request. God bless you. It will see you next time.